On the line with me now is award-winning children's and young adult author, Marsha Skripik. Marsha is in the midst of a flurry of new book releases this spring and all the public appearances that entails. But she took some time from her hectic schedule to tell us a bit about her most recent award, which she received from none other than Ukraine's president, Viktor Yushchenko, in Toronto this past week. She joins me by phone from her home in Brantford, Ontario. Thanks for joining us, Marsha. Hi, Paulette. Thank you so much for having me. Congratulations on this wonderful award. Tell us a little bit about it and uh, why you were selected. Uh, well, it's the Order of Princess Olha, um, and it's given to women specifically. It's an old award, I guess. It's been around for quite a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was uh, awarded it for my writing on the Holodomor, uh, my picture book, Enough, which came out in the year 2000. Uh, is a, it, it's a picture book about one girl and her father and how they save one village from famine. And it's the only uh, children's book written on that setting in the English language. And also Cubsar's Children, which you are a contributor of. There's also a story on the Holodomor in that collection. And so I guess it it came to the attention of um, Yushchenko. And um, so I was awarded with this medal, which is an amazing honor. Mm -hmm. When did you find out about it? I found out about it in January. Uh, uh, in fact, I think it was you who told me because you saw a press release about it before I had even heard about it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember that, but yeah, I think that's ringing a bell now. <laughs> yeah, and then about a week after that, I got a letter from the embassy about it in Ukrainian. <laughs> um, my Ukrainian isn't isn't very good, uh, and my husband read it to me. His Ukrainian <laughs> is better than mine. He is fluent. <laughs> so um, then what happened? Uh, you heard about it in January, and then... Um, there was a lot of uncertainty as to when and where. I had been told a number of different times and dates and places, from Ottawa to Toronto, um, from April the 18th to uh, the 28th of May, and other dates in between. And so it made it uh, a challenge for me to try and keep the dates open because uh, I had a play um, uh, adapted from one of my books this May, and also I have a brand new book out right now. And so my schedule was heavy anyway, but one always makes room for the president of Ukraine. I uh, One would, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, tell us a, li- a little bit about the awards ceremony. You finally did get the date finalized. I think it was just in the last week or so before, yes. wasn't it? It was just really with it, within the last week that we knew exactly the time and date. Uh, and it, it, the, the ceremony was held at the Old Mill Inn in Toronto, mm-hmm. and it was supposed to be at 9.30 in the morning. And so uh, my family and myself, we drove down from Brantford the night before and stayed at a different hotel and then uh, drove in, well, took a taxi in that morning because there were 600 people at this event. And wow. There was a lot of pomp and ceremony. It was just wonderful and, and mm-hmm. beautifully organized by the Toronto uh, Ukrainian um, Canadian Congress. They They just... They just did a phenomenal job, and Olya uh, Grod in particular, she was just so organized. She was the one who was looking after the 14 of us who were getting um, uh, medals that day, Mm -hmm. and she was just so calm, cool, collected, and very, very organized, and such an intelligent woman, and Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, it came off without a hitch. The, The entire room was beautiful. There were beautiful flowers on every table. Uh, Everything was just so nicely done. Uh, Prime Minister Harper initially was supposed to be at the ceremony, but as you know, he's in Europe right now. And so um, it was Minister of Finance uh, uh, Flaherty who was there. And um, it was during his speech that I realized that the uh, Holodomor uh, Recognition Act had gone through. And it had gone through the day before unanimously, but I'd been on my way to Toronto and I hadn't read the newspaper Mm -hmm. and so that was a very emotional time for me to find out that yes indeed Canada had recognized uh, the Holodomor Uh, that is just phenomenal Mm -hmm. phenomenal Mm -hmm. it's just so gratifying that was as much um, uh, it had as much of an impact on me as um, being presented with the order of uh, Princess Olha quite frankly. Mm -hmm. I mean, because, you know, the order is something that it's for me personally, but uh, the recognition of the Holodomor is something for the entire Ukrainian community in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, tell us what, uh, like, what happened? Well, everybody was sitting at 
tables, um, you know, there are ten per uh, table, and so there are all these round tables throughout the room, and he was sitting at the head table with other people. And uh, the, so the part, he, he did a, a very long speech, and I couldn't understand mm-hmm. it. And actually, my um, husband understands Ukrainian, as does my father and my father-in-law, and they were having difficulty understanding it, too, because the Ukrainian he speaks is 2008 Ukrainian-Ukrainian. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, my family um, understand various versions of Ukrainian, 1940 Ukrainian, 1912 Ukrainian. <laughs> And so it was uh, interesting uh, because it was just so entirely different. And so he gave the speech, and then um, at the very end, just before he left, he did the presentation of the 14 medals. And we had been told, we had been debriefed, the 14 of us, that we had to get to uh, the, the proper place in the room, but there's 600 people all sitting at round tables. And so I got up to get to where I was supposed to be, and people wouldn't move their chairs for me. <laughs> and it really took me quite a struggle to get back. You know, they were saying, sit down, sit down. <laughs> and um, why are you getting up now? Can't you go another way? And, you know, and not understanding that I had to get there and I couldn't mm-hmm. go straight through because they said specifically not to walk in front of the head table. So, you know, and we were right, right around the head table. So it was like doing this huge circle around the room to get to the back. And um, so then each person, one by one, went up to the front uh, had the uh, Yushchenko himself pinned the medal on my lapel and shook my hand and said a few words in Ukrainian to me, which I didn't know what he said, and so all I said in response was, Dushit Yakuyu, Dushit Yakuyu. <laughs> and I'm sure he's thinking, how could this woman write um, things if she has such a limited vocabulary? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he knew that you wrote it in English. <laughs> yes, yes, but still, you know, I just I felt so stupid right oh, then. No. And they handed me a bouquet of flowers, and there's the photographers there taking, um, you know, pictures of, of that. And so the embassy will send that official photograph. But my, my stepmother, um, she had the uh, foresight to uh, jump up and... Um, scurry over to where the official photographers were and, and was able to get a, a photograph, even though they specifically said not to do that to family members. But mm-hmm. they said it in Ukrainian, and she doesn't understand Ukrainian. <laughs> so this was a good thing. Good excuse. <laughs> so she wasn't arrested or anything. She got a, a, a pretty good shot of um, uh, Yushchenko pinning the uh, uh, medal on my lapel. That was And cool. so then um, they asked us to all get back to our own seats, which again was a challenge, with, you know, because there were so many people crowded in the room and they were all entranced with Yushchenko and not wanting to move. Mm-hmm. And um, and so that was that. It was an exciting day. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. And we were all waiting for quite a while because, of course, um, uh, a, a head of state doesn't give uh, his exact details of when he's arriving and leaving a building. And so, you know, he didn't come exactly when we thought he would. And so there's a lot of anticipation mm-hmm. for when he finally got there. And he looks healthy. Mm-hmm. Good. Um, that was the one thing that uh, really struck me. He has a real aura about him, a real presence, and um, and he looks healthy after everything that he's gone through. He looks darn healthy. Well, that's encouraging. Yeah, it was intense. Mm-hmm. The other thing is the metal's really pretty. Uh huh. What's it look like? Well, it's uh, it's silver. It's like a silver metal with an image of uh, uh, Princess Olha on it. And then it has four amethysts, mm-hmm. and uh, like a top, bottom, and each side. And then it's on a, um, a mauve rivet, ribbon. It's very pretty. It's very feminine. Um, but, you know, there's strength, a feminine strength to it. It's just lovely. Mm-hmm. And it's small enough that um, I could actually imagine wearing it to, um, you know, special occasions. Mm-hmm. It's not gigantic. It's not overpowering. What an experience. 